get them involved because you don't know, you know, you know, this this could be their only child and they're really invested in football and they're really passionate about it. Communication with parents is key for you to run your football team effectively because, you know, there's a lot of organisation. You need the players need to know where they're what time training is, what they need, if the venue changes, what the meeting time is. So the more information you can give and the more help and support, the easier it is for the parents to have the children arrive on time ready to take part in the practice with the right footwear, with the right clothing so they're not cold, so that it is an enjoyable experience. And working with parents is key. They are part of your team. Include them. Um, and let them know how important it is that that they are a part of the club. Yeah, definitely. And the, the tools you can use as well, that FA Match Day app, is really good because you've got the training, you've got the match, you've got the squad details, but you can put notes underneath it as well of what you need as a coach from your parents. Um, WhatsApp groups, as much as they might be a little bit jarring, having. 50 WhatsApp groups flying around, but you've got that under nines WhatsApp group and you know some key information in between. Like it's going to be really cold this weekend, so please make sure all the the children are all wrapped up really nicely. Um, the kickoff times, the venues, and all that stuff. So the WhatsApp group is key, but you can also have like player welfare officers for each yeah. age group, so that can take a little bit of. Um, not just responsibility, but like time commitments away from you. So maybe dedicate one person to be that welfare officer to look after that stuff in and around the player care. Um, I know with the teams that we've got with the girls is that we've got people within the teams that are looking after other stuff like sponsorship, um, events, things in and around that. Again, not just necessarily football, but all the other stuff that comes around football. Um, facilities and stuff like that so making sure that you're not just doing everything because that's what I've noticed going back into grassroots football that you could just be doing everything as a coach and there might be an accountant as one of your parents so why can't they do all the finances and the subs I know mm -hmm. they probably just want a weekend away from figures but if they've got the experience in it and the know out of it and give them a bit of that and then you know again that player and that team's like Mum and Dad's got a bit of responsibility in our team. It's brilliant, and I suppose it brings it together. They're a workforce, especially if you've got a team of six and seven-year-olds. They could be with you for a good ten years. You know, not just to put tape registers or put down cones, but to really get them feel the intrinsic reward of helping young players experience a positive learning environment where they have fun, friendship, fitness, football, and all those great things a community club can give. I can imagine there are some coaches right now watching this going, this is all great, but I have got that mum that just shouts at everything, gets really enthusiastic, and how do you control that? Which is really... Like coaching. Well, <laughs> that's one aspect, and we spoke about yeah. it before, getting them over to the side, getting them involved, because you don't know, you know, you know, this, this could be their only child, and they're really invested mm -hmm. in football, and they're really passionate about it. So maybe getting them on board, you know, we've got things like the stepping over the sideline workshops, we've got the Playmaker, FA Playmaker, which sometimes could help every parent that if you, it's free, you know, while you're at work or you're not trained to work, or whatever, just do this free course, you know, I've done it, you know, as a coach, um, it'd be good to have your feedback on it and maybe not airing your voice, but airing someone who's wearing the FA branded kit or someone who's qualified in it, talking about this is the way that you should communicate with players, you know, you should have these learning focuses, this is how you should develop players at these certain ages. Might just give them that little bit of insight, but it's a process, and it's a long process, and there are parents that it would be longer to get them over, I was going to say over the sidelines, but get them over to the situation where they look at it the same lens that you do. Uh, what advice can you give to coaches to give them the confidence to go and maybe approach a parent or to deal with difficult behaviour? It comes with a lot of experience and confidence. I always say if you don't know, go and ask someone else. Um, try and get support from someone else and that someone else might be within the club. That someone else might be outside the club that's working in another grassroots team. Like what are your guys doing at the moment to eliminate, you know, whether it be discrimination or a parent that's 
being really vocal on the outside of the pitch. Um, but definitely try to talk to other people to get their advice and their take. Personally, you know, I've been a teacher prior to this role for 25 years. So I'd be quite happy to go and speak directly with, with most people. How I would do it would be that it wouldn't be about confronting them necessarily open. It'd be, could I have a word with you for a moment? And that I would say I would need to report it to the, to the club just to ensure that you have been informed why this is an appropriate behaviour and then also offer, would you like some more understanding and education around this? Because I can put you in contact with the person at the club responsible for that. But yeah, that's, that's how I do it. But yeah, it's always about you're not on your own as a coach. And I think sometimes we feel we have to solve the problems of the world. Um, but uh, they may be our parent of one of our players, but we have a whole club network. We have a county FA to support you in those environments. So if you don't understand, just seek help in your club to someone who's supporting you. How can coaches have the difficult conversations with parents about things such as maybe the child's not playing, getting the game time? I imagine there's a little smile there, Danny, that that might be something that, that comes across quite a lot. It's that bit at the beginning of the season. If you can get that right in terms of the philosophy of the club, um, the code of conducts, um, your aims for the season, and it's adhering to that throughout the season. So if, put this the club that I run, every girl gets equal minutes. So there's going to be a situation, because they play games and it's not competitive in the sense of there's no leagues and there's no cups, it's going to come to an age where there is going to be a cup final. But it clearly states, the first statement is that every girl gets equal minutes. So we would adhere to that. Whatever happens at the end of it, happens to the end of it. And I look at that as, for myself, that as a club, as a human being, that I've stick to my values and I've stick to my beliefs and I'm actually, my behaviour shows it. And hopefully that transfers to the children. So when they get older and they have their beliefs and values that they actually follow their behaviours within it. It is gonna be challenging in terms of those, but I think if you get it right at the beginning and it's stated, at least when that conversation comes along, can you remember on the 31st of August when I got you guys all in and we'd done that little presentation and it said about equal minutes. It said about, we don't care if we win or lose, it's all about development and all that stuff. That still applies now, and I know it's May the 15th, but that still applies, and I'm gonna to stick to that because the girls got that as well, and they understand it. Um, and it's that difficult conversation is, if you don't like it, you know, mm. th it's an opportunity for you to stay here, or there's other clubs that might do things a little bit differently. I don't want you to go, but this is what we're gonna do right now. Yeah, I fully agree. I mean, even when I'm coaching the university team, those when they sign up to training and, you know, people pay their club fees to be a member of these clubs and they want to train, they want to play. So it's about, yeah, putting down your philosophy, agreeing it with players. And if that's what they agree, then that is what must happen. Consistency is key. So what are your top tips for engaging parents? Start the season with a, a welcome evening introduction to the club, sharing your philosophy, coming together to do a code of conduct, um, both understanding expectations, finding out a little bit more about each other, how we can all support each other to be the best, this, be the best season for their players. To follow up on that is the regular communication with parents, so whatever tool, social media tool that you need to do that, and the bit around don't be scared at the beginning of the season to create jobs or to offer jobs or look for jobs and put it out there to say would anyone be interested in little things like um, sending the results in to the county FA would anyone be interested in doing our social media account would anyone be interested in doing our fixture secretary within the particular age that you go to fingers crossed you get every single 10 um, set of parents coming back and saying, oh, I want to do that, and they're fighting over those roles. But if it doesn't come back, at least you've tried. Mm -hmm. um, and just try and delegate as much as you can with it. A lot of parents take their first step into coaching by taking charge of their child's team. Mm -hmm. uh, so what advice do you have for parents to help them deal with this challenge? I suppose sometimes it's seeking the support of your child when you are being their coach. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of saying, like, I'm doing this because I want to give you an opportunity and, you know, 
getting them on side as well to support you um, is a good thing. Get, it's about then those sort of, what do they call you during the session? Are they going to call you mum, dad or coach? And maybe have that discussion with them, what they'd prefer beforehand. Because what you realise, they're going to recognise every body movement you make of when you're happy, sad, disgruntled, having fun. So you're never going to be able to pull the wool over their eyes because they're your child. So it's about, um, yeah, making sure that, you know, being vulnerable with them on the car journey to training and sometimes being vulnerable on the car journey on the way back. What did you like about the session today? What did, you've got a little bit of insight there. So I think it's a great way to be. And like, as a, if you've got all the other things in place, like your philosophy, the consistency, the equal game time, you haven't really got to worry about parents saying, oh, you know, or you're playing your child more than ours because you've already said it's equal game time. Everyone's playing the same amount of time. Just still, just go stick true to the expectations you've sort of laid down in your philosophy as a coach. But you've also got that additional insight, inside knowledge into the changing room.